I have been selling this book, Zanaz Lee and Wan Chun Hong's Guide to Indie Filmmaking, which is published by MPH for a while now. It's a really good book. If you want to be a filmmaker, whether it's for YouTube, social media, TV, film, cinema, whatever, this is the book to get. I'm going to make it more accessible and more affordable to all of you because I believe that everybody needs to become a filmmaker. The more filmmakers we have in the world, I think this world will be a better place to live in. Now it's available as an electronic book download on my website. I'm going to link it here. It's really cheap. It's really affordable. It's only five ringgit if you want to get the ebook version. Okay, five ringgit. It doesn't really cost much, right? It's just a little bit of something for me. I mean, it did take a lot of work to write. Each chapter of this book talks about one part of the filmmaking process. And for each chapter as well, I interview a local filmmaker. It's only five ringgit. It's only five ringgit. Okay, uh, you're watching and listening to the Fat Billion Film Club and I'm assuming I'm Zan Azli. And I'm Shelly Busawan. And every week, we watch a local film and we review it. And, and this week, we watch the local film. Yeah, a part. Because we are a part. From each other this week <laughs> anyway yeah so we watched I haven't a had sex in a while yeah there has nothing to do with me being a away he just is just telling you a random fact anyway so what is the film we are watching this week Chirobo 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 the much anticipated Chirobo by the Azizuddin brothers Woo is it much anticipated yes Okay, so we watched the film. Do you want to tell them how we watched the film? Maybe you so, could tell uh, them we got invited. How you watched the film. We, yeah. we we got we got we got invited to watch a screening of the film uh, by Kairul Anwar from Paji. Mm. Okay. Uh, he was gonna do a screening right before the movie the movie's supposed to be released on Netflix, lah. Okay. Uh, and he was gonna do a special screening the night right before it's supposed to be released on Netflix. Okay, and the screening was quite special because well, Paji is like a campsite, chalet somewhere in the kampung in Sepang. And he was going to do it wayang pacha style. So we mm. got an invite. Uh, but Cheryl couldn't go because Cheryl, she needed to be plied by Nepalese in Nepal. Nepali men <laughs> in Nepal. Right? So, yeah. So I... When instead, I went with Apan. Mm. I'm going to hang out with a lot of people. I, haven't, I, I mean, I haven't met Kairu Anwar in so long. Who is Apan? He's a really nice guy to chat with and all that. And um, yeah, so went to Paji and watched it there. I mean, it was there. Uh, the Azizuddin brothers were there. The guy who wrote the script, because it was a competition. Jerobo was a competition organized by Kuman for scripts a script writing competition mm. and the winner would get their script made into a film. Mm. So Nicky Chong is the winner mm. and uh, I got to meet him. This is his first script that, I mean, according to him la, from my chat with him, this is his first script that ever been made la, into a film. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So congrats. I watched it, watched it uh, I, I watched it Wayang Pachak style, you know, Bentang Tika on the, in, the, in the field and the, on the grass and we ordered some nuggets and hot dogs and 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 barbecued lamb, and 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 we watched it. Yeah, in the field. You did yeah, the it was... barbecue lamb. No. Well, there were you, you support the local industry, right? Because uh, the local mm -hmm. economy. Because Cairo invited like the kampung folk to set up stalls, lah. So there were two stalls really. One stall selling like popcorn, nuggets, hot dogs, and drinks, and another stall that was selling like. Uh, like grilled lamb, yeah. <laughs> so like Apan and I like we did the date date kind of thing, like dating dating kind of thing. Bought like different news to share. <laughs> so for the viewers, <laughs> oh no, Apan is his actual like life partner. 
I am just a temporary human standing in until Apan's wife Sue dies and I die and then Zan and Apan are just going to live together forever. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's like literally we we actually bought houses 10 minutes apart. Okay, yes. from we love other. each other so much. They don't speak to each other every day but when they do it's real and deep and whatever. So, <laughs> well, you see Apan is also I've worked on with Apan on a lot of things. We started making short films together also. And he's our illustrator, animator, and graphic designer for all of our projects too. He loves Apan long time now, okay? That's all you need to know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. and it's absolutely natural for him to be dating with Apan instead of with me. He never buys any hot dogs. Anyway. I never buy hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I never get a hot dog. Where's my hot dog? Excuse me. You get my hot dog all the time. What are you talking about? You want anyway. mayonnaise on it? What? Chili sauce? <laughs> oh, honey? No, huh? it's cheese. <laughs> it's <malili. laughs> uh, Apan doesn't get that hot dog. I, I don't right. know. I wouldn't know, actually. I mean, we have seen each other's hot dogs, so... Um... Mm. <laughs> no, I to talk about. <laughs> well, check out, check out Apan's stuff. Arif Rafan Osman, he's a very famous artist, illustrator, comic yeah. book artist and all he that. He doesn't need us at all. Yeah, like. Super Doofus. Go to, go to Facebook, get, you know, look for Super Doofus or, you know, search for his NFTs. He's like leading NFT yeah, artist. He's whatever. like, he's super big on the <laughs> NFT scene. Anyway, yeah, so and, I... And everybody should check out Paji too. I think everybody should check out Paji too if you want to go on a holiday, like an eco kind of a resort holiday. Check out Paji. So are we going on an eco resort holiday? We should go one day. Uh, he's got more things now since he first started. When he first, when he first opened, he's invited us to go many times, so we never went. But oh. now he's got like chalets and all that. There's a camping ground and everything. It's quite nice. Okay. Okay, we'll go. Okay, yeah. so I didn't get to go to Paji and have hot dogs with Afan. So instead... Yeah, you just got plied by Nepali men. There's a story to that. We'll, we'll tell you this later. Anyway, so I just uh, asked um, Iskander Azizuddin, the producer of Jerobo, for a screener, and he was nice enough to actually send me a link. So thank you, Iskander, for the link. And so I got to watch it yesterday. Um, just so y'all so, know. So so I, I get to share hot dogs with Apan, and you you get to share get hot dogs with from Iskander Azizuddin. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, and and, and Nepali dogs. man. What? There are no hot dogs here. Anyway. So then, uh, and then what happened now? Uh? Oh, yeah. So just so you all know, Jerobo yeah. yeah. is on Netflix right now. Yeah, it's on Netflix it's right on now. Netflix yesterday. Uh, no, not yesterday. It got on Netflix. Yeah, like yesterday for me. But by the time you see this, it would have been two days ago. So it got on Netflix on the 31st of August. And uh, it's streaming right now on Netflix. So right after you watch this review, we'll let you know whether or not you should actually go watch it on Netflix. Yes. Yeah, and, and 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 I watched it on the thirtieth of August. But we even had fireworks at Paji wow. after the screening. Wow! <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. I watched it in bed. Okay, so what's the film about? What's the film about? Well, I couldn't concentrate watching it Wayang Pacha style because it's just in the middle of a field. I'm I'm a city boy, although I like the field, but. <laughs> I was just hanging out with friends, lah, more or less, going up and down, eating and drinking and, and, and chatting and all that. So I couldn't really focus on the film. So eventually, I actually went back and watched it on Netflix. So you couldn't focus on the film because <laughs> actually... you focus on Apan's hot dogs. Got it. Yes. Mm. <laughs> What's the film about? No, we, were, we were arguing who was more extrovert and who's introvert. And Apan seems to claim that he's an introvert and I'm an extrovert. What the hell? Yeah, that's quite. I'm the introvert. Yeah, what? and then we asked Ami. Ami said, "Yeah, that's kind of true." I'm like, "No, what are you talking about?" There's no way you're an introvert. And there's no way Apan is an introvert either. Apan is quite an introvert. Actually, between yeah. you and Apan, who went out less during the MCO, that already tells you. <laughs> anyway, so what is the film about? Oh, yeah, tell us what the film's about. You tell me what the film is about. You got to watch it twice. 
So, so the film the film is about um it's kind of I don't really know if it's post apocalyptic or apocalyptic, but basically um there are these these things in the sky that are infecting people's brains and like they mind control people on earth. So it's centered around this group of survivors la. Uh, specifically this one girl whom when she was I guess attacked by the sky screamers, I think they're called. Um I think called the sky screamers. Somehow, she somehow I did think I missed sky that. Beast. They're called the sky beast, I think. Sky beast. So when she got infected when she like got attacked by the sky beast, like nothing happened to her. She didn't get mind control, but like she gets a headache every time they walk past. So this is a bit annoying because it means that every time these sky screamers, these sky beasts make an appearance, she'll be screaming la because her head pain, you know. So uh yeah, the story is basically about about Della, about the sky screamers, and then about this group of people who are trying to survive the sky screamer attacks, and um, it's about how the sky screamers mancherobo your mind. Hmm. Hmm. Scary. Huh. So, how did you like the film? What do we think about the film? Well, okay. First of all, it start it starts Avlin Chauki's daughter. Uh, her name is Nia Sara. And it also confirm, uh, confirm is Avlin Chauki's daughter. Not Avlin yeah. Chauki's sister, since Avlin Chauki and then this girl's name is something Avlin right. Chauki. <laughs> and then uh, there's also this this other girl called Nia Atasha. And then there is um Grace Ng, uh, who's quite a prominent uh actress. In Malaysia, a theatre actress and also a film actress. Uh, there's Shazani Zikri, who's I think friends with us. Oh, really? He was the star in uh, Ra. What's that? What's that show called? Kabus. Ra Ra Rasputin. Oh, Kabus. Huh? He's the star of Kabus. Kabus. There, yeah, yeah, I was thinking Kabus. of that film. Kabus. I met him. He was there too. The cast uh, and all that were, like, were there. Some other people, uh, Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So there's that. Um, I really like um the acting actually. I thought the acting was was quite good. And um, uh, I I I if if I may, I didn't like the Chinese characters though. The two Chinese actors, I didn't like the acting. I felt that their line delivery is like all unnatural. Um, because <laughs> it was in Korean, but I don't know. But yeah, um. I thought the story was was actually quite controlled. Um, as you as people of the Fabian Film Club know, we are quite we're we're a fan of the Azizuni brothers' work. Uh, we've been following their work since um Soraya, since they invited us to watch Soraya. Uh, I I am a fan of their filmmaking spirit. Mm, okay. Not necessarily their work, but their filmmaking spirit and yeah, But you like your boys. Yeah, I like Kabos. I didn't like any of the ones before before this. Any of the films before, I I never I didn't like any of them. Yeah, but fine. but what I did mention is that I felt that they've got progress. Every film they make, there's better. progress and there's progress and there's progress, and I like that. And then when it ended with Kabos, Kabos was like great. You know, it, it was a good film, and and I I could see how they evolved out. So and that's why I like their filmmaking spirit. Okay, right? so this- so that was good. Yeah. So this is the film after Kabus. So do you like it? Yes, I know. Well, why don't you you, you go on first and then I'll tell oh. you what I think. Okay, la. So anyway, we are a fan of the Azizuddin brothers, la. It's filmmaking spirit, the work, whichever. Um mm. I I I too I too like the fact that their work has constantly progressed. Um I really like that uh Faisal as a director always um tries to do new things. Uh, he's always pushing to be better um and um it's it it shows in the in the work that they do progressively so i feel like this film was quite tightly controlled um more so than cabos even which is saying something because cabos was done quite well 
Um, I'm not really very sure about the story though, and I know that it was written by this Nikki Jong who won the the competition. Um, which is fine, but I felt like there were a lot of things that were kind of un- unexplained, you know. Um, but also I I also know that you don't like it when films explain things too much, and when they have all these like like the exposition is basically just them explaining what the hell is going on. But I still felt like there should have been at least some thing la. Like, what is this guy's humor? Why, what, how are they infiltrating your mind? Um, and I think it was that uncertainty that kind of made, was the key element of it being a thriller. Uh, because, you know, you don't know where they come from. You don't know what they can do. I think somewhere in the film also, uh, Wailing, uh, played by Grace Young, who's a resident doctor, she kind of talks about how or they don't necessarily just infect you if you're just outside. They infect you uh, through touch also. Um, you know, and, and it seemed like they were constantly trying to to learn like patterns or behaviors or, or ways that this thing could could spread la. Which having lived in a pandemic where there was a virus that we were not familiar with, that we didn't know, um, felt kind of familiar, you know. And that made the fear really, really real for me. The not knowing. Because like usually when films have all these long, long explainers, you already know how it's going to work. And then maybe like, oh, surprise, it has evolved. Or surprise, actually, you can also do these other things. But this one, you didn't know. And it just really brought me back to also 2020 when we didn't know if the... Sorry to say, but this was what it was called. The Wuhan virus at the time, COVID-19 was going to be something serious or not. Because we are also, I don't know about most people, but like for me, I'm the generation that lived through SARS and J1 and whatever. And, you know, it wasn't a global pandemic. So nobody really knew whether we should have taken this seriously or not. And then when we first started talking about COVID, it was just about, oh, this is a virus that is spread at the exotic meat market. And obviously, we thought we were going to be safe because we don't we don't sell exotic meats here on a mainstream level. But then, guess what? It became a bloody global pandemic. And then, literally, almost everyone got COVID. Even though I know some people who haven't gotten COVID yet. But at some point, people got COVID. And then we had to develop vaccines and we had to stay at home. And even if you guys remember at the beginning of of the pandemic, it was so uncertain. You know, you didn't know if um COVID was was just gonna was gonna kill you or if or if COVID was going to 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 be in your system forever. Uh, you know, we 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 didn't know about long COVID and all these things were things that we started to learn about two years later, and we're still learning about it now. It's still mutating and it's still you know, changing and evolving and we're, we're still learning so much about it. So uh, that in parallel to what was happening in Cherobo was scary la, for me. And that that itself was what made it a thriller to me, you know. Mm, but mm, mm. in terms of storytelling, it didn't really tell me a very good story, you know. Um, I get that it was about this these sex people trying to survive. I get that this girl was like special for whatever reason she was special. I wasn't very clearly explained, but it just mm-hmm. really felt like one scene out of something uh very long term. You know what I mean? It's like just looking at the first two weeks of the MCO in the two year pandemic. So mm. at the end of the film, even though you know it ends the way it ends. Um, there's still so much uncertainty in the air <laughs> and there's still um just so much unexplained and uh, while you're watching it also it doesn't have a good arc I felt it didn't have a good arc I didn't really I mean I knew where it began obviously because the film began there but it's just really there's no beginning there's no middle there's no end and it just really feels again just like one scene la, one scene out of something that should be bigger. So I didn't really like 
like I didn't really enjoy that. Um, but as a thriller, because Kuman Pictures produces um horror and thrillers exclusively, I thought it worked. It was quite thrilling. Um, it was definitely quite very scary in 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 an ideological sense. Um, I like that it didn't use jump scares. Um, I like the psychological element of it, but uh, in terms of storytelling, I didn't really do much for me. Yeah. Okay. So now, what do you think? Uh, it was uh so so. Hmm. Would you like to elaborate on why it was so so? Ah, <laughs> that is that's enough already, lah. What? Uh, the, I mean, we always review films like for minutes and minutes and minutes. Like, why don't we just tell them straight? And so so. <laughs> no. Uh, this is this is why people should summon film critics, okay? <laughs> Not for actually voicing their opinions, but for giving opinions like that. Uh okay, so, boleh so, so. Um. Somehow I feel that um Cabos was the best film. Um this did not top it. Uh it did not uh if anything, maybe the technical aspects of it is better. Uh, the way it shot, um the way how he has control of the camera angles and movement to tell the story as a director, lah. Huh? I think that that has improved lah okay i think the way they style the film uh and and i guess i don't know yeah the way they styled it lah the treatment of it uh, really suited what the film was about lah mm -hmm. but is there a but Okay. Okay, so before we were rudely interrupted by technology. Um poly technology. Um I was saying, yeah, it's derivative of many other films of this style. Um and you know, you put a group of people together. It also reminded me of that Walking Dead series also a little bit. You know, you put a group of people together. They are the only people left. They're not really friends or anything, but they've got to survive together and get all these kind of like dramas and all that. Uh, I don't know. It's okay. I'm I'm not I'm not saying the I'm not saying the film's bad, but it ain't good lah. Um, yeah. not to say that it isn't good either. It's just like very so so la. you know, doesn't inspire me much, doesn't excite me much. Uh it's okay. Watch is so can, don't watch is so can for me. Mm. You know? Uh and after watching this, I don't know if I remember it after like a year or two. Mm. You know. Uh I don't know if this is bad. I don't know. Is this is this very, very harsh for me to say this? So the no, Azizuddin brothers and Fukuman pictures. You've been harsher. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been harsher, but I don't know. So I mean, our friends. You know, it's our friends. At least <laughs> I <don't. laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what I feel. Uh. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I like Kabos when it comes to the Azizuddin <laughs> brothers uh, films. I like Kabos. Hey, look, look. We have was... to remember that Kabos mm. was written for them by their <laughs> father. Who look, is... Kabos is the one with Tony Yusuf, right? Yeah. The one, the, they, they murdered, murdered somebody, murdered yeah. somebody, and then they had a wife, the wife. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this one was written by someone else, you know, and then they were chosen to develop it into a film. So it's a little bit different also la you know I think the dynamic and the relationship is is also a bit lying. And, yeah, la. so it maybe it doesn't work. Mm, yeah. Um mm. I mean 
in everybody's career, there are always going to be hits and misses. Um, I hits think us and what hits us, misses and hits us. Misses and hits us, hits and misses. Um, I mean, I, yeah. I think I think like you said, direction and style is definitely there. Um, I think acting also actually is is there. Um, they yeah, most of the acting was they okay. have a stronger group of of uh a stronger ensemble of actors uh in this compared to in Cabos actually. Um, because I didn't really like the actress in in Cabos. I thought she was a little bit extra sometimes. Um, I like the guy though. The guy is like like not bad. And then um, this Avlin who has continued on in this movie lah. Uh, continued Mia, on with, in this movie. This Mia Sara also is actually quite good, very good. Um, I did, I had no problems with the Chinese guys acting. I know you did. Um, but I really thought that everyone, and the and the Chinese girl too. Yeah, but I really felt like everyone in that film was was great. Um, they're not like they're not like you know, it's not, it's not like KLGU ensemble great, but it's still quite a good, a good uh mix of uh of uh actors lah. So I like that. I like, know, I... The story was uh... just not not compelling enough for me. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I felt the two Chinese characters, the actors who played them, a little bit over, a bit trying too hard, but yet very stiff and Caillou. <laughs> Not Hyro Azrin Caillou, but uh, yeah, still. So you don't want to put baby oil on them and slide off their bodies? <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, I mean. <laughs> but uh, hmm, nothing inspiring la, for me, the story-wise. lah. So, uh, would you tell people to go watch it on Netflix? Don't know, ah. If you... I think this is something like... If you got nothing to do, you're outstation in a hotel. You know, you turn the TV on, suddenly it's on. You can watch, ah. <laughs> mm. uh, I don't know. So-so, lah. Can, also can. Don't, also don't. Well, I would say um watch it. I would I would tell people to watch it. Um mostly because I think that the filmmakers, like you said, have a good spirit. Um I think Nikki Chong also, you know, I don't think that it was a lack of trying. Maybe it was also No, I think he's very earnest. Very was, earnest yeah, was, in, in wanting to write a story and all that, yeah. Yeah, and stories that are or films that are made with this kind of attitude, um, always deserves to be supported. Um it wasn't completely horrible, like you said. It wasn't terrible. It it didn't have like racial, racist or sexist undertones. So like, yeah, why not? Like, just watch it. It's you know, if you already have Netflix, you're technically already paying for it. So just watch it, lah. Rather than watch garbage, other garbage that's out there, like you know, much love. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. You see, it's I wouldn't mind giving it a miss either. You know. Mm. it's not yeah it's like that for me okay. so we're divided I say watch it he says you watch this again you don't watch this again so maybe you should mm. watch it if you don't watch it you're not missing anything you know? yeah so maybe you should watch it and then let us know what you think like should you have given it a miss or you know is it like actually quite a intriguing but then if, if you're telling people to do that then everybody's gonna follow what you say already you just watch it no, there are people who will listen to you and just be like, okay, lah, I got no time, I'm not gonna watch it. So we'll see. Maybe yeah, we'll- I want to I wanna hear from those who decide just not to watch it. Okay, comment. Okay, so <laughs> make sure you comment if you actually decided to watch it or not, because we are going to keep score. Okay? And like keep tabs on it. So yeah, there you go, I guess. Is that it? No? Yes? That's it. All right. That's so- it. Like this video, don't like this video. Let us know what you think if you do watch it. Let us know if you decided not to watch it because Dan told you you can give it a miss. Um, yeah, subscribe, subscribe to the, the channel. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all our social media at Fabian or go to Fabian.com to get everything you've been watching and listening to. Are you saying my line? And I'm assuming I'm, I'm assuming I'm Zan Azli. And I'm sure it was on. Bye.